Welcome back to the Ultimate Mixdown. So we're going to get right into it. I hope you got the Ultimate Reaper template. If you haven't yet, go down to the description below, click on the link, and you can get the template there. This template is great if you're brand new to Reaper, if you just came over to Reaper from another DAW, or even if you've had some experience with Reaper and you've been using it for a while, and you want something that will help you get up and running quickly with tracks, effects, sends, and all of that. And then if you find you need more, you can always build on top of this template. They're customizable. So let's open our Reaper. And once you've downloaded the template, then you can go into Reaper, Options, Show Reaper Resource Path. Okay, and once it brings you to the Resource Path, go to your Project Templates, and then drop the template right in there. And that's how simple it is to install the template, and now you're ready to use it. So from there, we can go File, Project Templates, Ultimate Reaper Template. And then you can also do the same thing if you were to create a new session. You can choose to create a new session off of the template. Now this brings up the template, and I'm going to walk you through it in a second. I just have a few notes to make. There are plugins in here that are third party, so I urge you to download and install those. All of them are free. There's ones that use Repack. There's ones that are from some really good third-party stores. Now I'm going to walk you through this template from the bottom up. This is the way that I would record for the most part. So what I have here is I have the master track on top so that you can see it. It's there. There is a limiter on there so that we can limit our final song to not go above a certain threshold. We have our guide track. So especially when you're working with a band or if you're working with live instruments, I strongly suggest recording the entire song through with some instrument, a piano, a guitar, or something like that. So you set the foundation for your guide, and then you can use that to layer all of your other instruments and then your vocals on top of that. I have effects in yellow, and then I have them placed right next to the instruments where they are. So the vocal effects are right above the vocal bus. Okay, and I should say folder. This is really a folder in which all of these vocal tracks are organized through. This folder, this track right here, will affect all of these together. So I can mute them all at once, and then I can also adjust panning and add effects to all these vocals all at once just by having it in this folder. You can tell that it's a folder because there's indentation here. Going down further, I have piano if you have piano. Otherwise, just mute it or delete it or put a different instrument on there and rename it. Then I have guitar effects and guitars. I've muted the second guitar for the left and right channels. So this is under the impression that you want to have some double tracking. So if you have acoustic guitars or electric guitars, you would record one that goes left and one that goes right. If you decide that you want to do some quad tracking, which can be common in things like some really heavy metal stuff, then you can record two more guitars and pan those left and right as well. And then at the bottom I have bass, and at the bottom I have drums. This is drums MIDI. If you're looking for individual drum tracks, or if you're looking to separate out into individual drum tracks for more flexibility on mixing, I actually have a video on that. I'll put that in the description below as well. Now for the most part, unless it's an instrument, most of these effects have alternatives in Reaper. So if you don't want to go get the free third-party version of it, then you can go ahead and use some alternative in Reaper. Now the first thing that I would do is make sure that my project settings are correct. I like to record at 48,000 hertz or 48K. Um, some people do 96, 44.1 or uh, 44,100 hertz or 44.1 kilohertz is the standard for CD, and that's the minimum that you would want to be recording in. Okay, so keep that in mind. You also want to go to settings, and then under audio device, make sure that your requested sample rate is at the same rate. And then for requested block size, if you have the resources, meaning you have enough processing power to record with some effects already placed on the tracks, I would recommend going the lowest possible. And in this case, that would be 128. This reduces latency significantly, which is a delay between the audio that you're putting into Reaper and what you're hearing back in your headphones. Now, the other thing to mention before we even get started with recording is we want to make sure that we have the right BPM. I have 120 here. 120 is a very common BPM for a lot of pop songs, but yours might be faster or slower than that. And the way that you can hear it is by turning the metronome on. If you're trying to have a professional sounding recording, you need to use a click track. You need to use the metronome. So turn that on, hit the play button or hit enter. If it's not fast enough, increase the BPM. And if it's too fast, reduce it. Okay, so once you have the BPM and all of that ready to go, then I would record the guide track. So this is already ready to go. 
Okay, just select your correct input and then you can hit record, record that guide track all the way through. Try to do it a few times to the point where there's very few mess ups. So that's just the guide track. There's no effects on it. There's no routing. You're going to delete this later. This is just to get the song into the session for you to build off of. Now here's where the fun stuff happens. Now we are ready to record all of our instruments. I like to work bottom up, which means I like to do drums, then bass, then guitar, maybe piano if it calls, if the song calls for it and then vocals. So for the drums, this is a free software. They ask for donations and I highly recommend donating for it, especially if you use it a lot. You can skip for now, but just keep that in mind if you use this a lot. So here's MT Power Drum Kit. You can record either using a MIDI keyboard, an MPC pad, or you can draw the MIDI notes in yourself. And I actually gave you a foundation here for you to build off of. Very simple progression. Okay, just some cymbals, kick and snares on the off beats, just a very straightforward beat. You can take this file, double click it, and you can manipulate it any way you want. Click these notes over here so you can see which drums you're working with. Or you can just wipe this out and start recording your own thing. You just record arm this. Once you're done with the guide track, you would disarm this. And then the only other thing I want to mention on the drums is that I have an EQ here, just getting out those extremely low lows that you don't need unless you have some crazy subs going on and then just a slight boost for the kick drum, around 60 hertz. You might need to adjust this. This is a starting point, that's why it's called a template. And then lastly, there's a reverb here. It's not turned on, but you can turn it on and put a little extra reverb on the kit. I like to get all of the drums for the songs complete for every section of the song, intro, verses, choruses, bridge, all that stuff. Once I get all my drums complete, I know I'm ready to start recording guitar. So then I will go and record the bass, and I'll record multiple takes, and I'll take the one that I like the most. I have a few effects on here as well. It's not finding the plugin because this is a fresh install, but this would be ReQ, which is a parametric equalizer, and you do need Repack for that. So make sure to follow the instructions for that video. I also put the link in the description below on how you can get these effects. And if you don't want to go the Repack route, you can always replace the effect with the other ReQ. So this one was our EEQ. And the other re-EQ is R-E-A-EQ. And this is a standard Reaper EQ. Okay, and then you can just add that low cut, okay, or high pass around 40 hertz. Information below 40 hertz in a bass, again, unless you're going really sub-boomy, is not necessary. And then there would also be a little high cut or low pass at the end here, anywhere between 10 and 20k. Or, for taste, you might even reduce it even more. It depends on the bass that you're recording and the sound that you're getting out of it and what you want in your song. Then I have a little bit of compression. If you're recording electric, electric bass, electric guitars, a lot of that stuff is heavily compressed and distorted coming in, so you may not need to compress. You know, moderate compression, relatively slow attack, and then a relatively slow release. This means that you're not getting rid of the punchiness of the bass, but it will kick in if the audio is above the threshold and you can adjust the threshold here. And then the last thing I put on, a lot of people like to boost the low frequencies, especially around like the 40 to 60 hertz range, maybe 40 to 80 hertz. So that's what you have here. This is another EQ, and then I have some subtle boosting going on here. If you don't need this, just uncheck the box or delete the plugin from the effects on this track. Now we're looking at guitars. So there are effects on individual guitars, and the way that this would work is you record your first guitar by record arming it. Okay, don't, don't record arm at the folder level. Do it at the track level. And then you would record that one, turn it off, record the second guitar, turn it off, and then you can pan these left and right as necessary. This can go 100% left, 100% right, 50-50, or whatever you would like. And for each one of these guitar tracks, I have, again, that re-EQ, and then also the re-comp. And if you don't want the parametric one or you don't want to install Repack, you can always use the REA EQ that's already there in Reaper ready to go. Okay, so the EQ on the guitars is cutting out unnecessary low end, and that's it. You can go in and fine tune and do notches, valleys, and peaks here and there so that you can get it to sit just right, but at the least, cut out the low end that you don't need for electric guitars or acoustic guitars. And then there's a compressor here. Relatively subtle compression, fast attack, kind of fast release and this is just to tame peaks on acoustic guitars you most likely won't need this for electric guitars especially if they're heavily distorted but if you're recording acoustic guitars then be sure to turn that on and adjust the threshold and maybe a little bit on the attack and release as necessary and then for guitar effects 
Valhalla Supermassive. And this is amazing that this plugin is free. Also, just link in the description below. And this is kind of a delay reverb combination. This allows you, depending on the preset and the mode, it allows you to set a certain delay, but then it also allows you to set density, depth, so that you can have a nice reverb effect for your guitars. So I use this on guitars as more of a reverb than a delay. And if you don't like that, you can switch it out with something else. Right? If you don't want to get this plugin, you can use Reverbate, what already comes with Reaper. As I mentioned before, the only thing that you can't just switch out are instruments because Reaper doesn't really come with too many instruments. So moving on, we got the piano. This has Labs on it by Spitfire Audio. I just recently put out a video on how you can still get it for free with all the free packs. So all the free packs being all the free instruments, pianos, strings, ethnic instruments, all these other types of things, and the quality is amazing. So I highly urge you to get this. Now we come to the fun part. So once you have the instrumentals done, if you're recording vocals onto your tracks, I basically have four vocal tracks here, and the thought is essentially how I record vocals on top of my instruments. So I have a lead vocal, a double vocal, and some people like to record different sections of the song on different tracks, especially when there's dynamics in the vocal that change between verses and choruses and stuff like that. So you can always do a vox lead verse and then a vox lead chorus. Same thing with the doubles. So you can always create new tracks and you just right click, insert new track. And there's another track there ready for you to record. You don't have to select a track type in Reaper. For those of you that don't know, you just have to create a new track. And based off of the input you select, it will create the type of track that you need. Okay, so the idea is to create a lead vocal and then a double vocal, which is basically a very, very tight recording that is the exact same thing as the lead. It's another recording of it, but you want it to be so exact that you almost couldn't tell. That's what a good double is. And if it doesn't come out that way, then you want to edit it so that it's nice and in line with the lead vocal. Okay, and then there's harmonies. So you can harmonize going up, harmonize down, and then oftentimes these are EQ'd a little higher, so you take out a little more of the low frequencies, and then you can often pan them left and right to lead space for the lead vocal down the center. And then the effects on here, again, we've got the EQ cutting out the lows, then we have a de -esser. So we want to EQ, we want to get rid of all the nasty stuff or the stuff we don't need for vocals that takes up a lot of headroom. And then we'll go into the de -esser and we'll do some subtle de -essing, right? And this gets rid of some of the sibilance that got picked up in the microphone. S's, T's, P's. This de -esser will basically, you have to set the frequency to where the offending frequencies are and you can listen to it by clicking the listen button down here to see where those frequencies are. And then you adjust the amount as necessary. Now here's another JS plugin. This is the first compressor in the chain. This compressor is doing some limiting. So the ratio is 12 to one. So that's, that's hitting pretty hard on any audio that goes above the threshold. You will have to set the threshold. And what you're aiming for is just a few dB reduction. If, you, if you're doing heavier music like hard rock or metal, you can go higher. Okay, because a lot of that rock metal stuff that comes out today is heavily processed, you're really squishing dynamics. But if you're doing intimate stuff, more poppy stuff, then you don't want to be squashing the vocal as hard. And the idea is this is catching all those peaks that are way too loud. Okay, and then bringing everything else up just a little bit. Now we follow this in the chain with another compressor, and this is by Analog Obsession. And again, if you use their stuff and you appreciate their stuff, Definitely consider donating to them. We're going to use it for the compression, not the limiting. And what we want to do here is essentially raising the peak reduction until it until it brings the needle to about negative three to negative five. It adds a little of extra warmth to the sound, which is great. And it's doing this subtle compression to help tame the audio after you've already taken care of those aggressive peaks. Because if you hadn't taken care of the aggressive peaks first, this compressor would be overacting on those aggressive peaks and it might not be rebounding fast enough to tame the rest of it. So that's why we use this in parallel. Okay, and then every one of these vocal tracks has the same thing and then you can adjust all the vocals together in the vocal folder track. All right, and then I have a little more EQ here and then additional compression if necessary. So this is to catch anything else that comes through that you didn't get at the individual track level. And then we have two of the most common effects. You can always create more effects tracks. We have a delay for the vocals and a plate reverb. Now the delay is just re-delay, 
come standard with Reaper. The way that I do these buses is I'll take the dry signal down, I'll put the wet signal all the way to zero, or depending on the plugin, 100%. And that means that you need to tell it how much of the signal you want coming from a certain track. So all of these vocals are routed to this plate verb and to this delay. And you can see that when you click on route. So you can see that the vocal delay is receiving from tracks five, six, seven, and eight, which are the lead vocals, doubles, and harmonies. Right now they're set to negative infinity. This means that none of the signal is going to the effects. What you're going to do is, when you're ready to bring in these effects for certain tracks, like the lead vocal, you bring the volume up, right? And this is the amount of the signal from the Vox lead track that's going to the delay, okay? And then you'll do the same thing for doubles and harmonies, and you'll do the same thing for the routing on the reverb as well. So right now, everything is negative infinity. Nothing is going through, but you can increase and adjust as necessary for each of your tracks. Okay, this is a very common practice in the industry to have effects like reverb and delay, vo vocal reverb and delay, on separate buses where you route the individual tracks to them and then you decide how much of that track is going to go to it. You can either do it on the effect itself and adjust all of them at once, or you can do it on the individual tracks. So let's say you just have the lead vocal, you haven't done anything with double harm, doubles or harmonies, you can go to route. And then you can say, okay, I want a little more of the delay, and I want a little bit more of the plate reverb on my lead vocal. The effect for the plate reverb is, again, that Valhalla Supermassive. I took their Libra mode, grabbed one of their presets that I really like, and made some minor adjustments to help give a nice, warm plate reverb to the vocal. All right, and just keep in mind with the guitars, I did the same thing. Each of these guitar tracks are routed to the guitar effects, Okay, that effects being this reverb that I put on it. And you have to go into each of the tracks and identify how much of that track you want to be sent to the reverb. Very helpful. If you had to set this up every single time you're recording, you're just wasting time. You're wasting time with routing. You're wasting time with track creation. You're wasting time with so many things that you could just be getting your song done. So be sure to get the template down below. If you have any questions, definitely leave them in the comments. I hope you all have a happy Thanksgiving and happy holidays. Thanks for joining the Ultimate Mixdown. I'll see you in the next video.